The summit of Mustagata, 7,500 meters above sea level, and the Lipstick Blondes set out to be the first female team to ski and snowboard the peak. We'll be pushed to our physical limits, but little do we realize that we will come face to face with human mortality. It seems that he's got no heartbeat, he's not breathing, getting CPR on him, and his oxygen saturation is very low. Oh God, and his wife doesn't even know. His kids don't know. And I'm not sure whether it's wind burn or sun and snow burn. Six months of really hard work, of putting everything together. It's just completely down the pan. With little experience, I'm Carol Madge and the novice of the group. I'll be leaving my family for the four-week expedition. We hope to show that many more people could take up ski mountaineering. So do my children fancy it? No, really. I need to spend more time sorting out my ten babies than going up a stupid mountain. Organising the stupid trip is my sister Susie. Her big love is skiing off piste, and a mountain like this is the ultimate thrill. I kind of feel responsible for everybody on the trip because it's, it's really my baby, it was my idea. So if everyone got to the top, it'd be incredible. This mountain has a summit rate of 18%. So that means that of all the people who try to get to the top of this mountain, only 18% will. We were all asking ourselves, do we have the mental and physical strength to reach the top? And what will it be like to ski and snowboard in the thin air of high altitude? Just reaching the mountain is an expedition in itself, and it's not often you get so many humps at base camp. We'll spend three weeks at 4,500 metres acclimatising and meeting the other mountaineers. We get to know John Peacock right at the start of the trip because he's so friendly. You bond really quickly in this environment, sharing stories of home, comparing kit and expectations during the long days climbing and resting. The other mountaineers are your entertainment. There is the man with the most astonishing pair of thermals on over by the tents. We absolutely have to get a shot of it for our collage, our mosaic of ridiculous mountain clothing. It's our first day in base camp. And look at the snow. You can't even see Susie's tent. Oh my God, maybe they're that squash's tent. motivates a mother of two with very little experience to do something like this, 7,500 metre peak in China. Do you know, I'm asking myself the same question. I have up, well, my old... There seems to be quite a lot of kit and working out exactly which bits you want to take up and which bits you want to leave back down the bottom is a bit tricky. Oh, um, that's my knicker bag. I just bought a, a few pairs. I bought 28 pairs. 28! <laughs> Guys, how many pairs of knickers did everybody bring? Five! 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 To acclimatise, we spend days skiing uphill, or skinning as it's called, and then skiing down again. It's incredibly hard work, but the magical descent is the reward. So this must seem like a, a kind of a surreal thing to do on skis to most people, to go uphill. <laughs> without a chairlift or a cable car. Thousands of metres of powder to ski all the way down with no other person there to take it from you and ruin it all. Fabulous. Hello. This is absolutely incredible. The snow's amazing. It feels fantastic. All that hard, bloody work trudging up there thinking I'm gonna die every step was completely worth it. Life doesn't get any better, honestly. I just wish everybody could feel that. I think for me, most people's attitude to extreme sports and to trips like this is 
oh, you can't possibly do that, or no, you just don't go around doing that sort of thing. But when people suggest things to me, my attitude's always, oh, I could do that, or I could have a go at that. I am absolutely not wearing this. It's almost like a complete opening up of my heart and my soul when I get into this environment, so that's a huge attraction. The physical challenge as well is something that I'm really looking forward to, but I'm a little apprehensive about. We grow closer as a group, relying on each other to provide the fun and the support. But the effects of the exertion, the sleepless nights at high altitude and the intense snow and sunlight are taking its toll on our health. Up high, headaches and breathlessness are common. John, who's here to snowboard the mountain, is really suffering. Last night I had um, chain stokes breathing, which means you go to sleep and you wake up feeling like you're in a coffin. The mountain's going to be here next year, but there's too much to lose back home. He decides to leave the mountain and we set off for more acclimatisation. The next day, there's terrible news. Had radio news this morning, mm. and we're not exactly sure, but we think he might be dead. So we got bad news. You got news yet? Is he dead? Yeah. Three days ago, I made a little hat for his daughter. We decide John would have wanted us to carry on, so we set off on our four-day summit bid. It's the culmination of six months of training and preparation, and it'll mean climbing higher than we've ever been before. Well, I think what happened to John's put everyone on tender hooks. Because Susie just said to me that I shouldn't be breathing this heavily. Do you know what? Never underestimate how hard it is to walk uphill at altitude. In snow, with a pack on the We finally reached the highest camp at 6,900 metres, but we're desperately thirsty, and water means work. So just like every other night, the real hassle of melting snow for water starts. In the thin air and cold at Camp 3, it's a task that carries on all night. 4.38 in the morning. We're getting up now because we're going to go and leave for the summit. We haven't really slept all night. Everyone's feeling pretty rough. And it's freezing cold. You can hear the wind outside. This is just horrendous. And today I am hanging out of my pants. We have just one chance to reach the top. Susie breaks trail and with the summit in sight, sits down to wait for the rest of us. Funny feelings today, it's like a mixture of quite emotional, kind of crying a lot, thinking, my God, we're all going to get there. All the lipstick bronze are going to make it to the summit, it's going to be amazing. We all thought this was the summit. And we've just been informed that it's not the summit and we're actually three hours away. We can't carry on. I'm so fucked off. We, we could have got to the summit had we have gone against advice and that would have been extremely dangerous and it's... It's just not worth that. Six months of really hard work, of putting everything together. It's just completely down the pan. And this snow's absolutely shit as well. With bad weather approaching just 100 metres from the summit, we have to descend. I can't think of any other people who I'd rather have not got quite to the summit of Mustagata with than the lipstick blondes. <laughs> it was all of us, or none of us, going to get to the summit. And because of that attitude, Susie didn't get to the summit, but because of that attitude as well, I got way, way further than I would have done. Go for your dreams. You don't know what you can achieve until you actually put your mind to it. And if any other women 
are motivated or inspired to do stuff because of what we've done, then we've absolutely achieved what we set out to with this whole thing.